Hello boys and girls, hunters and ladies. This is another video from The Noob and it's quite interesting to make this video at the moment because right now, at the same moment that I am doing the voice recording for this video, I'm actually rendering the Mount Hyjal introduction video. So hopefully it's not going to have any impact of the voice recording or editing of the video, but it's going to be interesting to see how it turns out. Anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I would be doing for the first day of Cataclysm. And I'm going to give you a couple of hints and a couple of ideas of what you can do yourself. First of all, a very, very good tip for you to get a easy, effective start on leveling to 85 would be for you to do some quests the day before. Because, well, I don't know, for me personally, I'm going to do... I'm going to the midnight launch of a local... I'm not going to mention the name of the store. It's a pretty big chain of gaming stores all over the world. But anyway, I'm going there. They have a midnight release. So I'm going to get the game and I'm going to go home. And I would have bought the downloadable version. I did that for my second account. But for my main account, where my main is, I wanted to buy the special edition version, the collector's edition. So I'm going down to the shop to get that game and install it and then gonna play a couple of hours on the first day and what I will be doing on Monday so that would be tomorrow after work I'm going to go in and I'm going to make sure that I do have a couple of quests from Northern that I'm working on that I don't want to get rid of. I want to keep them in my quest chain or in my quest log. So I will probably have room for about 21 or 22 quests. Because the best start you can give yourself in Cataclysm Day 1 is going in, getting as many daily quests as you can have in your quest log, completing them, but not turning them in. What do you want to do is you want to turn them in at day one of logging into Cataclysm because it's going to take you, I don't know, 10 minutes maximum of flying around, turning in those 15, 20, 25 quests that you have. And they're all going to give you, if you do quests in Ice Crown, they're going to give you about 22,000 each in experience. So that means that you are going to get up to about a half a million in experience points before you even get started. That's something that I will be doing and I know a lot of people are doing it and you might just do it yourself because it is basically free experience points. I mean, you know the quests, they're very simple. You're not spending any time out of your cataclysm time to do this. So you have the chance of getting a good start on your cataclysm leveling because about a half a million experience points, it's, ooh, it's about 30, 26, 27 to 30% of the experience that you need for level 81. I'm not good at math. Anyway, you need about, if I remember correctly, about 1.7 million in experience. So you can see, doing this, doing the quest the day before you start, and therefore just handing them in, you're giving yourself a nice good boost before you even start questing in Cataclysm. One of the things I would have loved to do on day one was, if you remember a few weeks back, I did that sort of music video stuff where you saw some of the destroyed areas, some of the things that have gotten a huge change in the Cataclysm, and there was an achievement for discovering these places. And I thought, whoa, I want to start by doing that. Of course, because I've already discovered everything and gotten all the achievements for discovering all the zones and stuff, that achievement was already done, so to speak. And I felt that that's a little bit disappointing because I would have loved to start my Cataclysm experience by going to the archaeology trainer, learning that, and flying off, checking off all those new places, and maybe doing a little bit of surveying at the same time, and discovering them, getting the achievement, and then... Well, I don't know, maybe go off to do some, some questing. But since that's not the case, it's a little bit disappointing, but I'm just gonna have to start questing instead. So to be honest, I'm not really 100% sure. I haven't 100% decided yet where I want to start to quest, but I'm thinking I am probably going to go in the order of starting in Vashir and completing the entire Vashir quest chain, then going on to Hyjal, even though at that point I'm not going to same. well, I'm going to get the same experience or about the same experience as I would get in Vashir. But of course, as you gain other levels, you're going to need more experience. For example, the first two levels, level 81 and 82, you're going to need about 1.7 million in experience to level, but then you're getting to about 2 million to 2.4 and end up at about 2.5 million to get to level 85. And of course, as you get to the later zones, you're going to get more experience per quest and you're going to get better gear and so on. 
Now, one thing from the beta that makes me a little bit nervous is that at one point when I got to level 85, and you know you usually get, when you reach the level cap, have always gotten the experience that you would have gotten for a quest is transferred into currency instead. But some things that I experienced in the beta was that I would get about 5 gold for completing a quest in the beta, but when I reached level 85, I only got about 7 gold. Now, this could suggest that they're changing this somewhat. I'm not sure they have created bigger gold dumps you know where you can get rid of the gold that is created so it would look kind of strange that they're creating bigger expenses but they're not at the same time giving us more money to work with so i don't know if this tip that i'm going to give you now will actually be worth anything but one of the reasons that i'm always going in the order of starting at the lowest zones and always going instead of going as fast as possible to the higher zone so i can get more experience i'll rather start with going through all the lower zones and getting as much experience from the low zones as possible this worked very well for the Lich King expansion because you would start in, let's say, the Borean Tundra and you would complete all those quests. And what I did there, I went to the other side and started with the Howling Fjords. Okay, this meant that I had to do a little bit more quests to get to level 80 than I would have if I would have followed the normal flowcharts and would have gone from Borean Tundra to Dragon Blight then moving north towards storm peaks and then finally ending up in ice crown but by using this technique by taking zones by their level and not by getting as fast to the end game level as possible i made way more money on the quest when i did the zones after i reached the level cap because i never experienced that i had any low level quests okay we're not going to experience low level quests here in cataclysm because we only have five levels but because we had 10 levels in lich king if you follow the normal flowchart for your faction and you went back and did the other side, the zones that you didn't do the first time, you would experience that you would have low level quests and they would only give you about six or seven gold. Instead, by doing all the quests and all the zones in their level difficulty, you end up getting 13 gold per quest. So I ended up making, this is just a round figure, but about two to 3,000 more gold by doing it this way. And this is the thing that I'm a little bit nervous about in Cataclysm because as it looks right now, this isn't actually working because in the beta of course the beta is closed and we're only two days away from the launch but in the beta we only got two and a half gold more for finishing quests after we reached the level cap and if that is the case then you don't really have to do it in any specific order then you can just take it from starting with either Hygel or Vashir then going to Deep Holm and when you're done with Deep Holm you would probably be high level enough to go straight to Twilight Highlands but if the haven't changed this fact so that we would get six bronze for every experience point you would get an insane amount of money by doing the later quests in the higher zones because they give way more experience just to mention an example a quest in Bashir and Hyjal normal quest gives about 22 to 25,000 experience a quest in Oldham they give about 45,000 and of course this is I think why Blizzard decided not to do it because 45,000 in experience turned into gold we would suddenly be making about 25 gold every every single quest and I think with about maybe 200 to 300 quests we would be able to do giving this amount of money there would be way too much money running around in the game. I just hope you can understand what I'm trying to say. I know I'm rambling and it is kind of difficult to try and explain the fact that I'm trying to get out. But in short, if it is still viable, do as many of the lower zones as possible to level yourself so that you can do the higher zones after reaching the level cap. In any case, I am definitely going to have fun. I decided to myself that I would enjoy everything. I think I've mentioned this in earlier videos that I would sit down and read every single quest text, every single line. Even when you're right clicking on a person or a quest giver, there's a short line of something. Usually you can just have everything from, ooh, hello hunter or hello whatever. But some of the characters in Cataclysm, I remember one, it's a Drenai chick in Vashir, I think. 
it is. There's actually a, an, an entire, you know, the, the size of the, the window that you're opening where you have the quests. That entire window was full of text. And I decided to read it. And I figured actually there was some of her backstory. She told stuff about herself, how she had lost her family. And she was now learning using the shamanistic stuff that she's learning through the other the ring that she's now a part of to try to soften some of the rage and hatred and stuff that she feels to try to be, do something better but still also learning stuff about her past because she's apparently forgotten a lot about it and some of the stuff she's learning is helping her to remember what happened to herself and her parents so she might one day seek revenge or, or something like that so I decided to I'm going to I don't care how long it takes I mean for me I don't care about time I <laughs> I've taken time off from work i have about what was it i think it's seven or eight days of vacation so i have just under ah it's about 10 days of time where i can play the game and i will play the game i'm gonna have tons of coca-cola in the fridge i'm gonna order pizza every night or something like that so i can just sit here do nothing else but play i've told my family i am going to play cataclysm don't even bother trying to call me i will not be available for anything i'm gonna enjoy it i'm gonna have fun to get to level 85 it may take the time it takes i don't care if it takes i don't care if i'm the last main on the server to reach 85 i will get there i'm just gonna enjoy myself before I wrap this video up, there's something else that I want to talk about first. If you saw my last video, that's the introduction into Mount Hyjal. I mentioned there that that was the first out of three zones that deals with, you know, Deathwing and Twilight's Hammer and Ragnaros and all that. And if you want to experience the Deathwing story, you want to start off with Mount Hyjal, then move on to Deep Holm. Deep Holm is the zone where, if you watch the cinematics, that's where he gets his armor and he rises up from the mountain with flames flames all around him before and he starts flying around and wreaking havoc all over the place and of course the twilight highlands is the staging area for the twilight hammer clan that is where you have a huge well i'm gonna i'm gonna show that to you in another video i have some footage of that for a video that i did on archaeology and i am guessing that that tower will be the end raid where we are going to end up fighting death i'm pretty much guessing that Anyway, if you want to experience that story, like I said, you want to start off with Mount Hyjal and doing all the quests there and then going to Deep Home where you're going to learn more about him. Of course, I didn't have the chance to try it out because, as you know, I had some problems with getting into the area. But I've read a little bit about it and there is a lot of Deathwing stuff in that zone. And like I mentioned, Twilight Highlands is the one where you're... It's sort of like the Ice Crown zone is for Lich King. It's where you're stopping the Twilight Hammers clan or the cult. Stopping them with all their the stuff they're doing so that we can try to you know, stop the elemental evasion and all that and try to get the world back to normal again after the cataclysm I'm just hoping that you have gotten some tips maybe or something out of this video that I didn't just waste about 14 and a half minutes of your time but I'm really looking forward to this expansion and I'm hoping it's gonna be really good and I'm hoping that you're gonna have an awesome time too because I didn't want to go too much into the beta because I didn't want to screw anything up for me I didn't want to spend a lot of time on doing something just to have it removed when the live game came out and I would be sort of like burned out to do everything again the fact that I was in the beta has only made me want to play the game even more and I'm even more excited to get out and play the game so I'm really looking forward to the launch and the day tomorrow I'm luckily that I have a long day of work because otherwise the waiting would be so difficult. I'm kind of feeling like a kid on Christmas Eve, just waiting for the next morning to be able to get all my presents. That's a good explanation and it's, it's a fitting time of the year to come with that analogy because that's how I feel right now. And I'm really excited and I'm really looking forward to it and I'm going to have so much fun. And I just want to finish off everything by saying thanks very much for, like I mentioned, letting me take about 14 and a half minutes of your time to talk about this. And if you've gotten any tips that you can use, you're welcome to use it. You're welcome to try it out. If you think I'm full of crap, well, that's okay too. I'm just glad that you're watching and I hope that you will continue to watch my videos 
videos. And if you haven't done it already, make sure to subscribe because I have a lot of stuff that I'm going to be working on even after the Cataclysm launch. And I have projects, I have mentioned them in other videos. So there will be a lot of stuff and a lot of interesting things happening with this channel and with my movie making or video making in the future. So I'm, I just hope that you're going to watch it and give it a thumbs up too. Why not? Help me out and tell your friends about this channel. Get more people. The more people that watch the videos, the more fun we can have. So get out there. Let everyone know about this channel. That could be awesome. And let's all have a great time playing the game. We're all going to look forward to Tuesday when we can play the game. And I think that's well. about it. So see ya.